Hello class, this is Mr. Hart, and in this podcast we want to finish up the unit on energy, work, and power, and that's going to be talking about power. And so we've talked a lot about energy and how energy can be conserved and how it can transfer between forms, but we haven't looked at how quick how quickly we use it. Okay. And if you think about it, that's very important. Because think about when you buy a car. Now um, I'm sure every one of you has a dream car that they want to buy, okay? A nice Lamborghini or an Audi or a Ferrari, okay? Lots of really nice cars, okay? But why are these cars so cool? It's, and, I mean, obviously they look nice, but the thing that's so cool about these cars is they have a lot of power, right? Um, they can go zero to 60 really quickly or they can, you know, they have a V8 engine or whatever it may be. They have a lot of power to them, okay? But... Let's think about what power actually is, okay? And if you think about how we would define it, it's the energy used over time, okay? Power is the energy used over time, okay? So what's the difference between a nice car and a crappy car as far as power? If you think about a crappy car, it may go from zero to 60 in, you know, a minute, okay? It may take a long time to accelerate, okay? It can't go as, or it can't, accelerate as fast, right? It can't use its energy as quickly, okay? Whereas a car that has lots of power can go to zero to 60 really really quickly, right? It can go very fast. It's using that same amount of energy, but it's using it faster, okay? Same thing um, with like a bodybuilder compared to a little scrawny guy, okay? Let's say they lift um, a 10 pound weight 100 times in 10 seconds or something crazy, right? They're moving really fast. And then the scribe guy does the same thing, but it takes them an hour to do it, okay? They actually would use the same amount of energy, okay? But they're using it over a different amount of time, so they're using more power, okay? So hopefully that's kind of making sense, okay? If you have the same amount of energy to start with and you use it, the only difference is going to be is how long it takes to use that energy, okay? That's going to be the power. So in a lot of cases, it makes more sense to talk about the power more than the energy, okay? So let's look at how we calculate power. Power P is equal to the work over time, okay? Let's label these. So power is equal to the work over time. So how much work you do and how fast you use it, okay? Okay. Now, some people don't like the W, okay? They don't like using work because it can be confusing. It's the same as saying energy over time, but it means exactly same, exactly the same thing, how much energy you use over the same time because energy is the ability to do work, right? So either way, W over T or E over T means the same thing, but it's the power equals the work over the time, okay? Now, what units would this be in? You got work, which is in joules, and time, which is in seconds. Okay, so if you look at the units, you're going to get that the power is measured in joules per second, which we call a watt. Okay, so big W means watts. Okay, now don't get this confused with work. W as a variable is work. W as a unit is watts. Okay, so it can be kind of confusing, okay, but um, W means watts, which is just joules per second. So you probably have heard of a 60 watt light bulb. That means it's using 60 joules every second to power that light bulb, okay? All right, but let's see if we can answer a problem with this. Okay, oh, wrong slide. Okay, so here's an example problem. A man does 200 joules of work on a box in 25 seconds. How much power does the man use? Okay, and if you think about it, it's pretty simple. Okay, the work he did was 200 joules. And the time it took him was 25 seconds. Sorry, I plane through, flew overhead. Um, but if you look at this, work equals 200 joules, time equals 25 seconds. So to find the power, all we got to do is divide them, right? Because power equals work over time. And so if we... Um, Calculate that out, we get 200 over 25, and that's going to be, 225 is going to be 8, so we're going to get 8 watts. 
Okay, again, W meaning watts, not work. Okay, but that's our answer. Our power is equal to eight watts. So he's using eight joules of work or energy every second. Okay. All right, simple enough. Okay, let's see if you can do one on your own. So if you're making this up for participation, so you can answer this question. Okay, a 60 watt light bulb runs from a 20,000 joule battery. How long will the light bulb run? Okay, so you're gonna use the same equation. See if you can figure out um, the time. Okay? All right, so um, there's one more form of power that we wanna know about, okay? And that's this form mathematically, okay? And so, it, the power is also equal to the force times the velocity. Okay, so this is still power, okay, but it's equal to force times velocity. And a lot of people say, well, where does that come from? That doesn't make a lot of uh, sense. You know, it's force times velocity, that seems to come out of the blue. And just as it is, it does kind of seem strange that the force times the velocity equals the power. But let's look at what the definition of power was. Or, or what it was before in our other version, okay? Because the power was the work over time, okay? Well, if you think about the work, the work was the force times the distance, okay? And so if we have work over time equals force times the distance over T, then we can further separate that as the force times the distance over the time and if you remember, distance over time is the same as velocity. Okay, so it's the same, it's the exact same equation. There's nothing tricky here. It's just a rewriting of the variables. And so instead of work over time, we rewrite it out and we get force times velocity. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. But this is another way we can calculate power. Okay? And this is useful for cars and things like that, where we don't really have the exact amount of energy it's using. Okay, but we do know the force and the velocity it's using. Okay, so let's try a problem really quick. Okay, so a car engine pushes with a force of 5,060 newtons. If the car travels with a velocity of 24 meters per second, how much power does it have? Okay, well, we know the force equals 5,060 newtons. Okay, we know that the velocity equals 24 meters per second. And there we go, that's all we need because the power equals the force times the velocity, which is equal to 5,060 times 24. And if we pull out our calculators and actually multiply that out, we get, we get that that is equal to 1,000, or sorry, 121,440 watts again, okay, because this is power, so it's a measure in watts. But there you go, that's how much energy it's using every second, okay? All right, so that is power, and that is the end of the energy work and power unit, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully... You've got a good feeling for all those terms and what they mean and the law of conservation energy and everything like that. But let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.